Okay, I wanted to uh, make a point here in this little video. Let me put my microphone on my polyester shirt here. Um, I've been out shooting all day today. Oh my god, you mean I don't sit behind the stupid desk making videos all day? No, I don't. Um, obviously, there's a thousand different ways you can slap a shot around in post and in Lightroom. Um, I was out shooting all day today. And um, when I came home, I thought of uh, a premise on making a video. I thought, well, you know, nothing serves a video better than to make a point with pictures, obviously. Um, this is a blackbird nest, and uh, blackbirds are pretty stupid. I'm a big time bird lover. So the blackbird made his nest um, right beside my uh, car, my uh, where my par car parks. So you know, I have to go in and out with my car, and uh, uh, so I scared the bird off, and the point being is he laid one egg before the dumb bird got scared off and made a nest somewhere else. So, before someone accuses me of messing with the bird nest, remember that the egg is ice cold, and, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a dead egg. So, let's get that point out of the way, because if I actually didn't mention that, someone's going to say, Oh my god, you killed that little bird! It's like, no, I didn't. And the black bird just abandoned the nest and left one egg in there. And uh, so, anyway, um, on uh, taking pictures, um, a serious issue, there's so many things. Lighting, what it is you're going to expose for. I mean, are you going to spot meter it? What about the lighting? A serious issue everybody has, and everybody has it. It doesn't matter what level of photographer you are. You know, sometimes your brain is in off mode. You know how to control your camera. 80% of people do. Another 20% of people know how to you know, blast something with light, and, like, I've seen some professional photographers, and they've got a lot of nice lighting gear, but they evenly illuminate everything. They give nothing any definition. And it's like, why are you doing that? Why? I mean, if that's your style, that's fine, but, I mean, whatever pictures, if that's your style of portraiture, for example, certainly you're not doing that in everything, or maybe you only do portraiture. And, uh, you know, I look at... You know, there's actually a couple of Nikon-sponsored photographers, and I was looking at the, their pics, and it's like, well, they're lovely pictures, and they're properly exposed, but, you know, every shot is just, blah, is blasted with light. There's no definition or depth. And if that's your style for one certain style of photography you do, you may do portraiture and commercial and product photography, or just portraiture. And you can say that's your style, but really... I really know of no uh, hardcore portrait photographers at all that shoot everything that way. I mean, there has to be mood and drama. I mean, you may not even shoot moody pictures. Um, I'm going to show you nine shots here. How you can, you know, you got to be thinking all the time about what you see with your eyes it has nothing to do with what you can create. You know, it's all up here. It's not in your damn camera. It's like you, you look down, you see something. Or you look out and you see something. Landscape, macro. By the way, all these pictures were taken with my Nikon D750 and the Tekina 100mm. But, you know, what are you going to expose for? Are you going to spot meter? What about lighting? What about your angle of attack? How are you going to approach it? And, uh, you know, this elicits another mood to me. I mean, I'm not going to say what it is. I'll let you make up your mind as far as the mood that this conveys. Here's another shot. I mean, all of these are obviously of the exact same subject. And these are not uh, heavily molested in uh, post. And I'll give you a link to all these little shots I took today. After I got done shooting today, I thought, you know, the, the blackbird abandoned that nest. I thought, well, I'll make a video and I'll take, uh, you know, 100 or so shots, 100 or so shots, and, you know, talk about the different ways you can approach something. You know, proximity, angle, direction, Illumination. Here you can see uh, the bird nest uh, casting shadows from the sunlight. I mean, all of these are natural light shots, too, by the way. Obviously, I could take a thousand different compositions of a of a uh, of a uh, a blackbird egg inside of a nest, but that's not the point. I mean, I think nine pictures suffices. The links below uh, for these pictures that I took today are uh, in the video below. Here, obviously, where did I set my exposure? You know, this conveys a different compositional quality. I know that the egg is underexposed. Like, well, normally that would be, 
you know, uh, the thing that I would expose for. Well, am I going to have blown out highlights if I do that? Yeah. Could I selectively edit it and post? Or I will do selective uh, increase of exposure on just the egg and uh, leave this uh, two or three uh, stops underexposed so I have uh, even a Yeah, but why? Why does the subject matter have to be evenly exposed? Why does it have to? Why cannot it exist in the shadows? You know, everything is is still an art. This is an art form. You know, it's not about pixel sniffing. I know you think I'm like sniffing lenses like somebody else does, or a lot of people do, and you know, whipping out the slide rule. But I'm not. I mean, what is the compositional choice that you're going to make? You know, does the subject matter have to be that which is illuminated? If this is my compositional choice, you know, for the lonely little blackbird egg, which is very beautiful, is an ugly, ugly bird that basically is like, a, you know, a flying rat, as far as the United States is concerned. Their eggs are very beautiful. I've always been a, a lover of birds, and I've owned many pet birds. I'm a big-time bird lover, which is why I would never mess with the nest if I thought that the egg was live, by the way. But this is my compositional choice for this shot. The subject is underexposed, and that is to elicit the emotion and the thought that I had in the time between my ears, i.e. up in my head, that I'm going to leave this in the shadows, even though it is the subject. This is just a fanciful shot where I added some flowers. I nicknamed it Springtime. And uh, go over another shot. Same thing. Here's another shot. So what is the compositional choice? What are you exposing for? What about the illumination? Do I want this perfectly exposed? Do I want all the egg seen? That's not my compositional choice here. I mean, I only have... This is the issue I have with portraiture. I mean, I see some of these, you know professional photographers and they're very well known and you know some of them are uh, one of them is a Nikon sponsored shooter and uh, I looked at all the pictures of this person recently just for giggles and uh, you know I love looking at pictures see what someone is in someone's mind and whatever choice you make that's fine but I can't imagine any form of portrait photographer and that is what this person's specialty is where everything is just blah, blasted with light you know these are beautiful model shots, too. I mean, the women are obviously gorgeous, the sharpness is there, the exposure is correct, but where is the depth and definition? You know, a body is, you know, an egg's got some curves on it, right? Well, the human body's got a lot more curves on it than a damn egg. And I can't even fathom anybody making all of their, you know, if that's one certain genre of portrait photography that you're blasting everything with light, that's fine, but I mean, all of this person's portraiture shots are that way. And uh, that says that someone knows how to do proper exposure and proper posing of someone for portrait shots, but it means that they've, they don't have the eye to see that, you know, why, do I, why am I evenly illuminating every shot? Why does everything have to be illuminated? Why does the main subject have to be in perfect lighting? Why would I want to blast everything with light? You know immediately what the hell this is. It's an egg in a nest. You know, although you can only see part of the egg, and you, we got shadows covering part of it. You know, this is a compositionally perfect, valid choice, whether it's an egg or whatever it is you're choosing to shoot. Landscape, portraiture. You know, pick your genre, but also test the waters and feel things out. Because also what you see with your eyes is not what you should create with your camera. Your camera takes pictures. You're not supposed to be someone that takes... Your, your camera's job is to take pictures. Your job, damn well, is to make pictures. Nobody has ever bought a camera ever that makes pictures. You're the maker, the camera is the taker. How's that go again? Your camera is the taker and you're the maker. Well, I mean, not to mention, of course, all the things, like I said, that you can do in Lightroom. Here's the last shot. is a little uh, fanciful... Uh, uh, edit, uh, high definition, high contrast, obviously some blown highlights here on purpose on the nest, but it's the compositionally valid choice that I chose for this uh, particular manipulation on this shot. So all of these shots are valid. They all elicit a different mood and a different feeling. 
This is very subtle, obviously so. This is dramatic and also subtle. You can use whatever emotion you want, but I mean, you know, example on this. The same thing in modeling applies to this egg. Why does the subject have to be, you know, in the light? Why is that valid? Every time. I mean, if you want to make it that way, you know, if you're taking a studio shot and someone wants that shot and that's what they're paying you for, give them what the hell they want. But if you're the photographer and you're taking the shots for yourself, your portfolio, why is that a valid choice? Because even illumination, blah, blah, blah. It's not a science. This is, this is where the gear, you know, is on the floor drooling. It, it does, has nothing to do with that. This is where you take over. And what takes over, or doesn't take over, in most cases, is what's between your ears. Anyway, these are just, I cranked off like 120 some shots, raw plus fine JPEGs with the Tequina 100mm to make a point after I got done shooting today that, uh, you know, you could add stuff, you could take stuff away, you change the angle, you got to be thinking with your mind. I mean, angle is everything, lighting is everything, everything is everything. But everything that's everything has nothing to do with your camera because your camera is taking shots, you're the one that's making them, and your camera has no idea. What the hell to expose for? What do you want to expose for? What? For example, not that shot, this shot. I spot metered this. Here we have our specular right here on the egg. Here we have our midtones that looks aquamarine, and here we have our shadows. Well, if I worked off the way this uh, Nikon sponsored shooter works, you know, and that were a person, the whole thing would have been blasted. And uh, there'd be no definition. There'd be no character. Uh, you ever talk about movies where someone says, that character was one dimensional in that movie that I saw. That means everything was like, you know, when you blast something with light and it has no differentiation between the specular, the midtones, and the shadows. It is the same thing as someone talking about a movie or a TV character that's one-dimensional. You know, they've got no life. There's nothing that draws you in. Absence is as important as presence. Absence is exposure. I mean, excuse me. Uh, exposure is uh, presence. The absence is as important. Uh, what is not seen is because the mind is brilliant at filling in things that are not there. And if I create drama, and most of the shot's black, I can't see the profile of the egg. I can fill it in. And when your mind fills stuff in in a void like this, it is automatically, and the ancient Greeks figured this out thousands of years ago, but nobody's teaching this in photography. Nobody! Why? Morons! When there is an absence in a picture, whether that picture is good or bad, or just a blah picture like this of a uh, blackbird egg, the mind is drawn in, just like a vacuum. When there is a vacuum in a picture, the mind is drawn in. And if the picture has intrigue in it, I'm not saying an egg's got much intrigue, it's got some, how much it has as far as intrigue is your own decision. But when a picture, this is why, you know, uh, poorly lit uh, lingerie clad models are far more intriguing than a dirty, you know, I hate to be crude, but far more intriguing than a, you know, a dirty, double X-rated, perfectly exposed, you know, lots of lighting, bam! You know, totally buck naked nude. It's like, yeah, I see too much. Yeah, I see it all. But, a poorly clad one, I mean, a poorly illuminated one that's uh, wearing, you know, so you're not really seeing anything. There's no nudity. And, uh, you know, say 30% of the shot is absolutely black. Mind is drawn in, just like a vacuum. That's such an important part of photography, and it is just a brain dead duh that nobody gets that. I'm not saying nobody, but way too damn many people. I'm gonna properly expose that. I'm gonna matrix meter it, and you know I took this shot, and this shot sucks because it's not properly illuminated over here. I'm gonna blast it with some light. Boom! It's like, well, great, it's perfectly illuminated now, but all the intrigue is gone. It's now one dimensional. This is not one-dimensional.
Obviously, this is a kind of a boring shot, but I took these pictures today to make a point. And the point has been served. Whether you accept it or not is another matter, but it is certainly undeniable and is applicable to all forms of photography. Okay? Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.